how big can you actually get as a natural lifter? This is currently a great topic of debate in the fitness and strength sport community, and people tend to have very polarizing opinions. So I wanted to dive deep and try finding some actual evidence for what the natural limit can actually be. And if you enjoy these videos, feel free to leave a like and a comment to support the channel. First, let's start off by declaring what it means to be a natural or enhanced lifter. Most people will agree that a natural lifter is somebody who has not taken any performance enhancing drugs, meaning that they haven't taken anything that is regulated as doping by WADA under their prohibited substance lists, which includes anabolic agents, or what we refer to as anabolic androgenic steroids. But it also contains other anabolic substances, including selective androgen receptor modulators, known as SARMs. Now, the prohibited list also includes a ton more stuff like hormone and metabolic modulators, narcotics, stimulants, and basically anything you can get caught for with a drug test. But for simplicity's sake, we're gonna classify a natural lifter as somebody who has not taken anything on that prohibited list, and vice versa, an enhanced lifter is somebody who has taken stuff on that list. But since not every substance is equally traceable or even has the same positive effects on performance, we are mostly interested in drugs that alter testosterone which is what most so-called fake naturals are accused of taking. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. So now that we've established what a natural lifter is, let's dive into the current research on how much muscle mass a natural lifter can generally manage to pack on after a serious career of lifting weights. Although there isn't really a lot of research simply comparing natural versus enhanced lifters for the fun of it, we do have some reference values from at least two good studies that researched how much lean body mass a natural lifter or at least a natural athlete who strength trains could put on compared to enhanced counterparts. The first study, which was made in 1995, calculated the fat-free mass index of 157 male athletes, of which 83 of them were on anabolic steroids or had at least previously used them, while the remaining 74 participants were lifetime naturals. Measurements on body fat, height, and weight were taken to assess the person's fat-free mass index, which is quite similar to the body mass index but for lean tissues, and it's calculated with the formula that you see on your screen right now. Unfortunately, I was not able to find if the study had any entrance criteria of years of training, but it was mentioned that some of the participants in the study were competitive bodybuilders. And within this group of natural lifters, the average fat-free mass index was just below 22, which is equal to a 5 foot 11, 180 centimeter guy who weighs around 183 pounds or 83 kilos, estimation 15% body fat. And in the steroid group, the FFMI was 25, meaning that you could take that same guy and the same body fat percentage and add about 26 pounds or about 12 kilos of lean tissue to that frame. Now, this sounds like a big difference, and it definitely is. Packing on over 20 pounds of lean tissue will definitely make some large visible changes. However, what is more interesting is that in the natural range, there were a select few individuals who were pushing to an FFMI of over 25 as well, which has since been defined as the so-called natural limit of lean body mass. Again, back to the reference material, if you were an average guy of around 180 centimeters, 5 foot 11, and around 15% body fat, you would find yourself weighing around 210 pounds, which is a pretty large guy, and that would be equal to most Mr. America winners back in the 1940s and 50s. And just to compare, somebody like Ziz had an FFMI of, I quote, only just over 23. Now, does that mean that the natural limit is basically Ziz with an extra 12 pounds of muscle mass? Well, not exactly. Even though this study took on a large sample size for this sort of assessment, that doesn't really mean that you couldn't find even bigger natural lifters if you were even more selective. And it seems that based on the methods that they really just took some random gym goers from the Boston and LA area. And this takes us to the second study I'm gonna reference, which was made in 2019, and they assessed the FFMI of 206 drug-tested athletes from different sports ranging from rugby and American football to golf, weightlifting, and track and field, amongst others. And what's so interesting about this study is that they found FFMI numbers that were much higher than that of the 1995 study, with outliers in this sample having an FFMI even over 30, with the 97.5th percentile being 28.3, meaning that 2.5% of the participants had an FFMI over 28.3, which would basically be the guy we mentioned before, 5 foot 11, 210 pounds, but now with an additional 
15 pounds of muscle. Now, one thing to mention here is that we don't actually get a good understanding of the individuals here because the study was used to get reference values for sports and not actually check what the natural limit could be. So therefore, you cannot exactly know how these guys looked, which puts another point to the FFMI, and that is that it's much easier to get a higher score of lean body mass if you also have higher levels of body fat. So, for example, if one of those massive guys was an offensive lineman in American football, who are typically much larger in terms of body fat, it could be that he's packing a tremendous amount of muscle mass, but also be in the 20, maybe 25, even 30% in terms of body fat percentage. And another thing to note is that in the 1995 study, they also conducted an interview with extensive background research on top of drug testing, while the 2019 study only performed randomized drug tests, which could theoretically mean that participants had been on PEDs previously. And as we know with all professional sports and athletes, they are definitely not always drug free. So is there even truly a way to assess incredible physiques while also making absolutely sure that they are in fact natural? Well, yes, there is, although this method also has its limitations. You see, anabolic androgenic steroids were first introduced in the early to mid 1930s, and they weren't even widely available for anyone until the 1940s and early 50s. But for simplicity's sake, we can say that any physique before 1930 is without a doubt a natural athlete. And even then, back around 100 years ago, people had virtually zero knowledge on progressive overload, nutrition, muscle hypertrophy, all that kind of stuff, meaning that these physiques could theoretically be even crazier in today's society. So I went for a quick Google search and scrolled through one of my favorite lifting channels called Natty Life, who documents a lot of old school bodybuilding stuff. And here are some examples of confirmed natural lifters from the older eras. The GOAT, Eugene Sandow, the inventor of the bench press, George Hockenschmidt, Katie Sanvina, Bobby Pandor, Begon Raj, and many more who definitely look impressive and for the most part even better than most fitness influencers of today. And all these people created their physiques with little to no actual knowledge on how to gain muscle optimally, so their natural limit may have been much higher. But what limits a lot of the information about bodybuilders and strength athletes from the 1930s is the actual documented footage, either pictures or videos. Both are very scarce, because I can tell you it probably wasn't very normal for buff guys to get their pictures taken back then. But back to the main topic. Can you, as a natural lifter, get insanely big like an open pro class bodybuilder? No. But can you look like some of the most aesthetic fitness models and lifters on the planet? No, but you can look similar. And I actually think that this is what the Natty or Not debate in hindsight is a lot about. Many want to look exactly like their idols, but don't actually realize that even if you had the same amount of muscle mass and the same level of body fat, you would probably look nothing like them. Take David Laid as an example, the guy has an incredible physique, but in terms of the FFMI scale specifically, his level of body fat and muscle mass combined is naturally achievable. But even so, he has an amazing genetic bone structure, so you would probably look nothing like him. And you also have to realize that the people you see on social media, even if they have naturally achievable levels of muscle mass or body fat, they also usually have other features that make their physique more unique and sometimes more visually appealing. Everyone has their own set of genetics that we cannot change and my approach to this is to not even think about it. Just train hard, diet right, and make the best out of what you have. And unless you've reached your natural limits, I don't think you should ever consider taking any performance enhancers, because if training and diet is a problem for you as a natural lifter, it's still gonna be an issue for you if you're on half a gram of testosterone. And to reach that natural limit, your training should be on point, your diet should be on point, and your recovery, importantly, should also be on point. And I know some of you will probably think this video was made to further enhance the messed up view of what is considered naturally these days, because it's definitely already very difficult to assess it just based on social media. But I honestly just wanted to push the message to everyone that you can all have a great physique if you do everything right and consistent for years, and that you shouldn't really compare yourself to others in that aspect, but rather try to reach your own limit, because you never really know how high that ceiling actually is. Be critical, be realistic, but also shoot high and have fun on your lifting journey, because whether or not you want to get just bigger, stronger, 
cleaner or to help your mom open the pickle jar. We're all in the gym to improve ourselves and to have fun. If you enjoy these videos, I'd highly appreciate it if you leave a like and a comment, but if you don't like it, let me know why. Make some good discussions in the comments and just for the heck of it, today's question, what is your most recent PR on the bench? One rep max, three rep max, you let me know. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. If you've made it this far and you want to support the channel further, check out my coaching service linked in the description where I take on clients, assess your needs and create custom diet and training plans from scratch. I am an exercise physiologist after all and I want to use my competence to help you guys reach your goals. And also make sure you check out my sponsors, Young LA and Prosys, linked in the description because they're both having a massive Black Friday sale right now. And if you want to use the code BACK or BACKEYE to save yourself some serious cash, links to everything is down below in the description.